Henry VIII is most known for his disastrous marriages and the fact he had six wives and two of them would go to their executions inside the walls of the Tower of London. Both Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard lost their heads with an executioner showing no mercy and carrying out the will of the notorious Tudor king, their husband. But the executions of Henry's second and fifth wife could not have been any different. There were, of course, some comparisons, and today the pair lie close together, it's believed, at rest inside the Tower of London's chapel, below the altar floor, despite there being little evidence of Catherine Howard's remains ever being discovered. But why were these executions different, and what did they show us about the brutality of Henry VIII? Anne Boleyn's legacy as Queen of England is mostly her daughter, Elizabeth I, who became the greatest Tudor monarch of them all. She was considered a queen who split England completely in two. And this is very different to Catherine Howard, who much less is known about. Compared to Anne, Catherine has been mostly forgotten in history, but she was a young girl who was abused by a number of men in her life, and she was not protected by those who raised her. It was Thomas Cromwell who devised the downfall of Anne Boleyn that resulted in her execution, and Anne was the victim of Cromwell and her husband. Henry needed to rid himself of Anne, as he was courting Jane Seymour, the soon-to-be third wife, and Cromwell spun a web of lives that saw her accused of treason, incest and adultery on the Tudor king. But this is something that Catherine Howard had in common with Anne, and she too would be accused of adultery. But her adultery, it's believed, was concrete and not a fabrication. Catherine had been seeing and liaising with Thomas Culpepper, the king's close friend and favourite courtier. But Anne, in her trial, even, and her imprisonment, was treated like a queen. But Catherine Howard was not. The second Catherine was arrested, she was stripped of everything she had and the title of queen. Following the arrest of Catherine Howard... A law was made that attributed treason to the adultery committed by the queens. This meant it was treason for a queen to sleep with someone behind the king's back and to not even disclose their history to the king within 20 days of marriage. But Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard would both spend their last few days inside the Tower of London. But only Anne Boleyn was given a trial and Catherine was not. Anne had a chance to defend herself, but Catherine didn't. Anne's guilt was predetermined before, as the men she was accused of plotting and sleeping with had already been condemned and were executed on Tower Hill. Anne, when she was arrested, was at Greenwich Palace, and she was taken by barge down river to the Tower of London, with the journey taking three hours. Catherine Howard would also arrive by barge to the Tower of London, her place of imprisonment, as she was taken from Hampton Court. She had been manhandled by the king's guards and shoved onto the vessel that took her to the tower, and she even passed under the heads of her former lovers, which were above London Bridge. She was no longer a queen, and was taken to the tower via Traitor's Gate, the horrific and infamous entrance and water gate. Anne never went through Traitor's Gate, instead taking the stairs next to it to be taken into the formidable fortress. Whilst at the Tower of London, Catherine Howard, it's believed, did not necessarily experience any luxuries, as she was a prisoner like many others there. But Anne Boleyn was allowed some concessions, showing that of the two queens, she had the nicer experience waiting for her execution. The first major difference in the executions of the two was that Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard were executed using different weapons. Anne Boleyn would be condemned using a sword and Henry VIII ordered a French swordsman to come from Calais to perform the job, as it was seen to have been much more reliable and straightforward as a method of execution, as opposed to the axe. The sword was swift and instant. Anne maintained her calm on the way to the scaffold, which was near to the White Tower, and at the time she could not see the executioner's weapon, as the sword was hidden out of sight. Anne was given permission to speak to the crowd, and the small group of witnesses, including Cromwell and Henry VIII's illegitimate son, Henry Fitzroy, she addressed the crowd, saying, Good Christian people, I am come hither to die, for according to the law and by the law, I am judged to die, 
and therefore I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, nor to speak anything of that, whereof I am accused and condemned to die. But I pray God save the king, and send him long to reign over you. For a gentler, nor a more merciful prince was there never, and to me he was ever a good, a gentle and sovereign lord. And if any person will meddle of my cause, I require them to judge the best, and thus I take my leave of the world and of you all. I heartily desire you all to pray for me. O Lord, have mercy on me. To God I condemn my soul. Anne maintained her innocence until the end of her life, and then the executioner took off his shoes. It was a very formal sort of execution, and the executioner had continental flair and a significant degree of skill. He did this to make sure Anne did not hear him approach. After being blindfolded, Anne repeated the words, To Jesus Christ I commend my soul. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. Then the executioner picked up the sword and signalled to his assistant to make a noise to distract the queen, who was now kneeling on the scaffold. Anne looked towards the assistant, but from the other side the executioner appeared and swung the sword, taking her head clean off. Anne's ladies then used a linen cloth to cover her head, and they collected her body in an old oak chest meant to store bow staves. But Catherine Howard was not allowed a swordsman to perform the job, and she was executed using the commoner's axe, the same weapon that murderers would be condemned with in London, and the local executioner performed her death. She was held in a prison cell and was brought to the block the night before so that she could practice how to rest her head. Catherine then was led to the scaffold the following morning, and as she approached, she was not calm. She was terrified and very pale. She needed help up the three steps, and once on the scaffold, she was so weak she could hardly utter any words. She did say she deserved a hundred deaths for offending the king, and she told people to pray for her soul. Catherine was then also given a blindfold like Anne Boleyn, and then she knelt down at the block like she had practised, and the sizeable crowd that had gathered to witness her execution were shocked. The executioner swung the axe, and in one swift blow, her head was separated from her body. The executioner picked up the head of the fifth wife of Henry VIII and showed it to the crowd. And this did not happen with Anne Boleyn's execution. Also, with Anne's execution, there was no block. Another point of intrigue is the scaffold of which they were both executed on. The scaffold for Anne's execution was covered in black mourning cloth of velvet, but with Catherine's execution, there was only straw and hay on the scaffold to soak up her blood. Neither of the queens were given a coffin, but Catherine was then buried in a hastily prepared hole, and it's believed that quicklime was poured over her body to make her decay much quicker, hence why there is little evidence of Catherine's remains today. But Anne's remains are different, as the bow chest of oak she was buried in preserved her remains to the point where they could be identified during the Victorian period. But the differing executions are very telling when it comes to understanding the impacts of both queens, and also how they were both treated. Anne was given the prestige of being a queen even in her final moments, and she was given some dignity in her death being executed by a professional and by a skilled man on a scaffold which was very decorated. She was then buried at the heart of the Tower of London's chapel. But Catherine Howard's execution was very different. Catherine was a woman who had been abused throughout her life, and she was still a queen, and she deserved more than she got. She was executed like a serious criminal on a scaffold covered in hay to soak up her blood. And also, she was treated with a significant disdain, and was simply discarded. Both of the women, though, died with courage and were brave at the hands of their husband, who had gone down in history as the tyrannical king of England. Their treatment was unjust and was horrific, and today both Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard deserve to be remembered in a better light. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.